do think comedy is like useful for like opening people up to like their emotions and to, to sort of like you know it, it sort of put removes your guard a little bit mm. so like puts you on the back foot so i think um it can definitely it can definitely help with that i mean uh and that's sort of i mean we're not trying to change people's perceptions too much with our film we're just trying to like you know give people a, a sort of a heartwarming uh, an emotional story as well as a comedy but uh yeah they those two kind of like darkness and light do kind of combine Sit quite well, well. Together, yeah yeah no, but I, I I thought it was a comedy, but also it has a meaning and it's, I mean, uh, it's not laughing all the time. You're also exploring bullying, loneliness, depression, creativity. All these concepts are really cool in the movie. Like, uh, I don't know, Brian seems to me like a character that is a, per a person who's uh, isolated and uh, I think maybe Charles becomes the alter ego that he needed to open up a little, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. And, I mean, I was, so I was just kind of saying like I, I almost don't want to dictate what people mm. think too much like like Charles is quite a blank slate so if, if people sort of interpret things then that's great like that, that's what sort of making films is about right like it's for people to sort of relate to them in different ways so I think that's what this film particularly is good at because Charles is quite odd that you can put your own kind of story and emotions onto yeah and he's funny but the Rupert what brought you into into Brian and Charles. Um, that, uh, it all started really through live live comedy, really. So D David Earl did. I, I run some shows in London. David Earl did my second ever gig in Shepherd's Bush out in West London, and uh, I offered him a, as as Brian Gittins and I offered him a residency there and then, and we, so we worked together live for for about five six years. And then I think he got a bit bored of sort of doing stuff on his own. And uh, we, we, we interviewed, we, he used to have a radio show online and I phoned in one day and, and I was too scared to sort of talk. So I just, um, <laughs> I just did it, did it through, through a sort of voice activated thing online. And that was literally, the voice was called Charles and that was when he was born. So and then, yeah, and then David wanted some company on stage and that's when Chris got involved and yeah, Charles was physically born. But yeah, so yeah, we just carried on through live, really. What What do you think of, of the way Charles looks in the film? Was that part of how you saw it? Saw him? Yeah, that was we, we, when we, even when we did live, like Chris Hayward made him, but um, it was always it was always a bit lo-fi and crap. So we, we we wanted to keep hold of that in the film. We didn't we did we did have a conversation, didn't we, about sort of making him a bit more mechanic or whatever but it sort of didn't need it really i think we just hit his legs and made him a bit taller yeah there was bits yeah. where we like when we because we read that we remade his head yeah so like slight like he's got a better haircut and stuff like that but like, <laughs> there were bits where, like i do remember like we were like discussing his eye and we had some options for it but some just felt like too high tech mm. so we sort of like went back and then but we didn't want it to be like too lo-fi so it ended up just being i think it's just some some old bolts is like what his eyes made of yeah it, do you think uh, it's Charles Bryan's alter, alter ego, the fantasy? I mean, we all have the fun, maybe not all, but it would be nice to have a, a, a mechanical friend, I guess. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, uh, alter ego is an interesting yeah, interpretation. Like that, yeah. yeah. I mean, he is kind of like, yeah, maybe he's like his inner child or like, yeah, someone who's like, who's got no filter sort of thing and just sort of says what they want. We talked about that in the short that it'd be funny as an alternative ending in the short that um, the reveal is that Charles isn't there. Oh, he's an like yeah. imag imaginary friend or whatever. But, yeah, or like Kevin. Yeah, we, we didn't go that way, luckily. But um, yeah. yeah. Do you think uh, Charles represents more like uh, pragmatism and Brian emotions or not necessarily? No, Charles is more like the teenage teenager right maybe yeah, I don't think Charles is particularly pragmatic uh, yeah <laughs> yeah Charles is more of a yeah much more of a sort of teenager kind of blues kind of, he's like, he's there as like yeah he's there to sort of <coughs> bring emotions and like sort of and to you know let Brian kind of step into a new world and mm. and you know like get out of his comfort zone so yeah he sort of like helps bring Brian out of his shell as well as you know going on his own journey so how uh, uh, how important was it for you guys to have the film uh, at the Sundance Film Festival and getting that great uh, you know great reviews and everybody embracing it and 
Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing and sort of surreal, really, because it's our first film to even just to be invited to the film. Mm. We we're like, when when they put in a, an offer, we we're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> sort of like. So yeah, you know, as film fans, that's the sort of that's the festival that everyone's aware of, or whatever. So yeah, that that was amazing, and that to have that foundation and that it, it was a sort of a bit of a sleeper hit. It's really helped going into into the launch. It's, it's an amazing association. Yeah, like um, yeah, I mean, dream come true. It's yeah, like so like, uh, if. For our first film to be at like what I consider the best film festival, it's just like yeah, couldn't couldn't believe it really. Well, it's very impressive, but the film is a is a, a lot of fun. Also, the photography was uh, cool. I thought it was very well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shout <laughs> yeah, out to Murray, yeah, yeah Maren Tullet, our, our DP, um, and and Matthew Tule Tule, our colorist as well. Like yeah, they just did an amazing job on like just those landscapes and just. Yeah, keeping it feeling like a documentary, but still being able to elevate it cinematically was like, uh, yeah, really impressive. And Hazel, what about uh, Hazel? Uh, what about her? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, uh, she's the object of desire, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's, uh, well, we always sort of thought it was funny to like, uh, to, to, to create some kind of love triangle, mm. like just like that, that concept. Just, I think when Chris and David first mentioned it, that just really made me laugh that we're like, okay, yeah, there's some like, that 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 Charles would get compete for her for Brian's affection. Yeah, the jealousy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But then um, also, she's equally important for like for for Brian and her own journey. Um, yeah. Uh, how many interviews have you done today? <laughs> <laughs> why, why does it feel like we've done loads? <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to know one. because yeah, yeah, you're our first and first only one. We only got one today. <laughs> yeah. Ah, this but, is a, okay. Uh, uh, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. I was wondering because sometimes you have to do like 25 and then it's like too much. But no, 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 I'm not, it's not a criticism. I was just curious. And, we were, and it's, it's been a nice day today. Yeah, we yeah. Got, it's quite relaxed. And uh, this is just to promote the film in the US or all over? And how important is it to? No, my question, how important is it to do press days? in order to get the film, uh, the word out there? Uh, yeah, super important. Yeah, mm. like, uh, yeah, this is, for, I mean, this is technically for the US, but really, you know, like, everything's online. Everything's guess, online yeah. now. So yeah, yeah so um, yeah, it's super important, especially for a film like this, where we like, I mean, we're relying on word of mouth, really. That's sort of, um, we want kind of just people to go and see it at the cinema and, and tell their friends. Because I think there's, you know, this is a, this is a really kind of, yeah, it's, it, that's how this will spread, I think. So. so, so Rupert, were you the money guy? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I read producer, I think I read somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I, I did produce it, but um, it was a bit BFI and Film 4 were, were the financiers, so they backed it. And uh, so we, we just we just used their money to make it really. You had to learn yeah. that, how to do, like, yeah, I had to, I had to learn how to get the money. learn what them. money was and stuff and <laughs> set up a bank account. And yeah, yeah. So are we going to see you uh, together doing other other projects in the future since this one is, went so well, Sandance and all that? Yeah, we all loved working with each other and it's, just, it's a really great team. And yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. More to come, for yeah, sure. Definitely. I want to know one more question. Is, is humor universal, would you say? Uh, we all laugh at the same things. <laughs> I, think, I don't think we all laugh at the same no. things. I think, like, I mean, I think there's. I, I, I certainly don't think the humor for this film is necessarily universal. Like, I think that you know, it's. But I, I, I think humor in general is universal. But like, you know, um, depends on your what your taste is. 